America is one of the richest nations in the world with some of the highest incomes per person. Yet compared to other less prosperous countries, we have worse crime, social problems, and health care. Why? Epidemiologists Richard Wilkinson and Kate Pickett say the problem isn't prosperity, it's equality. They are the authors of a new book, The Spirit Level, Why More Equal Societies Almost Always Do Better. Richard and Kate are with me now to talk more about the book. And, and let's talk about the premise here first. And when we're talking about equality, um, are we talking about uh, more from a social aspect and, and not an economic aspect? No, what we've done is simply measure the scale of income differences between rich and poor. I mean, how much richer the top 20% in each country than the bottom 20%? And compare that with uh, levels of health and uh, a whole range of social problems like violence and drug abuse and teenage births. And we find the more unequal a country is, the, more, the worse all these problems get. Actually, we, we were very surprised by how strong these relationships are, so we tested it out again amongst the 50 states of the United States, asking the same question. Do the more unequal states do worse on all these things? And the picture is very substantially the same, whether you look at countries or American states. So even versus the UK, uh, where you're from, and versus the United States, the premise remains the same? That's right. You know, across the 50 states, there are... Um, two-fold, three-fold, ten-fold differences in some health and social problems in the more unequal states compared to the more equal ones, and the same scale across different societies. I'm afraid the US and the UK are both very unequal. We're about twice as unequal as the more equal countries like Japan, Finland, Sweden, Norway. I guess the bottom line question here is why? You would think that... You mean why the, they lead to worse yes, outcomes? Yeah. I think the, probably the key element is various forms of social stress. And I think people have often intuited, well, for hundreds of years, that uh, inequality is divisive and socially corrosive. And we see in more unequal countries, levels of uh, trust go down. People trust each other less. They're less involved in community life. And I think social relations become more about status competition than about community. And that's one of the key elements. When you looked at uh, other countries or countries that you think are, are doing well, are doing it right, who, what did you find? Well, countries like the Nordic countries and countries like Japan have much smaller income differences, and that does seem to be what they're getting right. Um, it doesn't seem to matter how they get it right. So Japan has smaller income differences to start with, whereas Sweden, for example, redistributes a lot of income. But however they achieve that greater equality, it seems to have an impact on this whole range of health and social problems um, to a very great degree. And the benefits seem to extend all the way up society so that even the better off in those societies um, are benefiting from greater equality. And, and from a population standpoint, I mean, there are smaller countries compared to the U.S. or I would suppose even the There UK. are small countries amongst the more unequal ones, yeah. in Singapore and uh, Portugal are in our data set and they're amongst the most unequal. They're also very small countries. So, so you're saying the population the doesn't really side. matter that much? No, yeah, it not. doesn't matter. In fact, the two biggest countries in our analysis are Japan and the United States mm. and they're at completely opposite ends of the inequality spectrum. One the spectrum. most equal, the other the most unequal. So what are they doing right, Japan and the Nordic countries? Well, I think it is a matter of the scale of income differences, but it's interesting that there are quite different ways of getting greater equality. Uh, if you look at a country like Sweden, uh, it has very big differences in earnings and they then redistribute through taxes and benefits and a big state. But Japan has a much smaller state. It has smaller differences in earnings and depends less on taxes and benefits, uh, has smaller social expenditure. Uh, so you can get greater equality in very different ways, but both ways it seems to have the same benefits in terms of the quality of life for the vast majority of the population. We're in a severe recession. It's been affecting not only the United States, but it's global. Uh, and many are saying that the way to get out of this is to put more of an emphasis on economic growth in order to jobs, get the, get the jobs going and things like this. How do you see this as compared to what your premise is? Well, it's hard to know what effect the economic recession is going to have on inequality. I think what it has taught us is something very important about um, the runaway bonus cultures and huge incomes at the top of society, 
we've allowed inequality to grow because those top salaries have really run away from the rest of us. And I think we were all prepared to tolerate that as long as we believed that these were expert people building an economy that might trickle down to the rest of us. Now we've actually seen that those are the people who seem to have damaged our economy by their risk-taking. We've had to bail them out. Mm. The rest of us have had to bail them out. So actually now we've got an opportunity to talk about the benefits of greater equality, to rebuild our economy in perhaps more sustainable and more democratic ways and think more about how does our economy benefit the vast majority of us rather than the very, very tiny few? Do you want people to look at this not just from an economic standpoint, do you want us to get beyond that and, and try to address these much. things? Very much. I mean, I, I think it's fairly clear now that uh, economic growth, which is now primarily about consumerism and status competition, it no longer bring, brings benefits in terms of uh, life expectancy or well-being or measures of happiness. None of those are any longer related to economic growth in the rich countries. Uh, and increasingly people, I think, are worried about the social quality of life, all these kinds of social problems, drugs and violence and everything else. Uh, and I do think in future we've got to think, particularly as we face the problems of global warming and trying to reduce carbon emissions, that the way we improve the quality of life for all of us now is by improving the quality of social relations and understanding how much that is affected by the scale of income differences between us. But there seems to be such a tug of war on things like this because what you're advocating is also sort of like the person and taking them and their health and their well-being versus, okay, needing to make money and a living and, and all of that. And they seem to be two competing forces sometimes. Well, I think in our modern market democracies, we all have enough to eat. We mostly have shelter. And so what we're competing for isn't really necessities or income to provide us with necessities. We're competing for income to buy us the status goods we need to show how well we're doing in society. And that's a bit of a zero-sum game. If we all get richer, we actually none of us manage to get ahead any more than we did before. And it's, it's sort of an empty, soulless pursuit, and I think people feel that increasingly. They're working long hours, competing for more material goods, but they don't make them happy. Happiness hasn't increased in the United people, States over the past few mm, decades. Surveys show that uh, people generally have a sense that consumerism involves sacrificing more important things like family and friendship and community and, uh, and the things that really make a difference to well-being. I think we're all trying to uh, take a look and take stock at where we're all going here and uh, how things are either getting away from us or bringing it back, particularly in these tough times economically. The book is called The Spirit Level. It's an interesting book, an interesting premise that you're really talking about here, particularly in these times, why greater equality makes society stronger. Thank you very much, Richard Wilkinson and Kate Pickett. Thank you. Thank you.